is the brawniest Audi RS ever sold in the U.S. And <laughs> it's raining on the track. Let's drive the 2014 Audi RS7. Check the tech. Now the RS7 slots at the top of the stack, above the base A7, above the A7 TDI, even above the S7, which was the previous hot rod king of the hill for this car. Spot one of these pretty readily. Different bumpers, front and rear, are very noticeable and they add two inches to the car's overall length. It's also got a different, very aggressive face and grille. Big old quattro badge here in the front. Out back, look for a different diffuser and very big body exhaust tips. And inside, some pretty hot looking quilted sports seats that I don't believe any other 7 gets. Now that inside, an RS7 doesn't have really anything that another A7 couldn't have. It just is a great place to put all of it. First of all, you got the pop-up screen here, which is controlled by their MMI control panel that also has a fingerprint writing or touch panel for radio presets. We've seen this before, like it a lot. And then a lot of things within this system are connected. For example, your maps are through Google Earth, a 25-mile radius that it scoops up for photorealism. When you're looking for an address, you can use Google Online Search to find that. And under the information menu, you've got what they call these Audi Connect services. They still divvy up radio and media in the two buckets, which I think is old school at this point. Optical disc remains in this vehicle. You've got some hard drive space to rip to. They do a nice job laying out meta tags and giving you a very clear way to navigate. Whatever you're listening to goes out through a base, 14 speaker, 630 watt Bose surround sound audio rig. You can also option up for nearly six grand Bang & Olufsen sound, which we have noted by the pop-up tweeters. Now this car has built-in internet connectivity through a SIM card right here to a 3G data network, not 4G, and therein lies the rub. Things do tend to move a little slowly if it's rich data. Getting those Google Earth maps loaded, it's a little slow. Retrieving requested information. And they claim you can use the built-in in-car Wi-Fi hotspot to power up to eight devices. Good luck with that. 3G barely powers one device. Luckily, Audi has just announced built-in 4G in their cars, but starting in the entry-level A3. After an initial six months, you'll pay about 17 bucks a month for a gigabyte of data just for the car. Now the optional tech on this car includes a head-up display, which is pretty good. It's getting in the category of BMW, though not good as BMW M cars. You've also got a button over here that turns on a night vision display between the gauges. It calls out things by heat signature and lets you see, especially on dark roads, if pedestrians or animals are kind of moving around the periphery. Also optional is the driver assistance package, which would include lane departure with a really pronounced stick shaker on the wheel if you drift. About the brightest, most obnoxious blind spot warning lights in the mirror. I really appreciate them because you actually notice them. An adaptive cruise control that goes all the way down to a full stop and then go again when traffic continues to move. It's a very advanced ACC. We also have not only a backup camera with many different points of view depending on your parking situation, but then when you put the car in go, you also have a front camera with some trajectory lines. Now up front, this engine just fascinates me. 4 liter V8, twin turbo, it's extremely compact. Check out this architecture here. What's novel about it is in the valley, in the inside of the heads here, you've got the turbos and the exhaust apparatus. The intakes are on the outside of the heads. 560 horsepower, 516 foot-pounds of torque. Car weighs about 4,500 pounds, 0 to 60 in 3.7 seconds, while delivering 1627 MPG, which is quite respectable and way outside side of gas guzzler territory. One choice on the drive line, it's Quattro, of course, all-wheel drive, and an 8-speed automatic. I know you're cringing right now and saying, wait a minute, what about that dual clutch out of the S7? I think this might actually play out better, as we're going to find out in a moment. Now, another question people have is, wait a minute, how'd they get 140 more horsepower out of this V8 than it has in the S7? Primarily boost. These turbos go up to 17.5 PSI max. In the S7, they're limited to 12.3 PSI. That, and all the strengthening and tuning that goes around that, does wonders. I'm not fool enough to disengage the stability control, but Quattro has such a good one, it's not that intrusive. The power coming out of this engine is glorious because there's not just a lot of it, but it comes on right away. That's the beauty of doing a big engine with turbos. When you first crack the throttle, you got plenty of displacement to get things going. That, while the turbos are getting spooled up, and then they push it all the way through like a freight truck. 
torque vectoring on the rear and the intelligence of this system makes a damn fool like me get out of this looking good and in one piece. Now my same love letter goes to the transmission. I know a bunch of you probably were thinking, ah, oh, good grief, it's got an automatic. Why not the DSG dual clutch out of the S7? Because this one's better. It's better in all around everyday driving. It's silky smooth. Then when you get out here, the shifts are plenty quick. Maybe not quite as crisp as that DSG, but they're plenty fast. Now the Quattro system on this guy kind of baselines at 40-60, 40% of the front, 60 to the rear. But it can go as high as 70 front or 85% power to the rear. And it's got the torque vectoring applied to the rear wheels as well. So it'll kind of claw its way out of a corner and turn you the right way. Off the track, you also have a really tractable, comfortable commuter car that remains responsive. It doesn't turn into some slug or sloth. It's still taut, but friendly. Note that if you want the really serious sports suspension in this, it's not available in the US RS7 yet that I know of. That's an adaptive, fully mechanical suspension. The base suspension that comes in this guy, which is still very adapted and smart, is air-based. Now the RS7 is, of course, a specialty model with a very special price, about $106,000 base. You're paying nearly $25,000 more than for an S7 to pick up 140 horsepower, to lose about 0.8 seconds, 0 to 60, and to add a gear, the 8-speed automatic versus the 7 DSG. What you're really getting when you buy one of these is a bunch of bragging rights as well. Now, to get this CNET style, you got to add 2800 bucks for the innovation package. That's going to bring us the night vision and the head-up display. I like both. Another 2800 is required then to get the driver assistance package. Adaptive cruise, the lane and blind spot and pre-collision and stop and go. There's a Bang & Olufsen sound system for nearly six grand. I have never heard $6,000 in them that I've listened to, including this one, so I'm gonna pass. And about 180 bucks a year to get those Audi Connect services to work. All in, we're looking at a bit over $111,000. But for what may be the perfect car, if you have the money. Very spacious and utilitarian. Got a lot of comfortable room inside for folks. Space in the back for stuff. It's brutally fast, extremely capable. And if you do get it on the track, it's gonna make you look good. Now, I wouldn't own anything this expensive or complicated one day out of warranty, but until then, you've got four years during which that grin's gonna actually start to hurt.